I want to talk about the Assistance API and why it's so damn powerful and why it's such a game changer, especially for creating SEO content, but also just in general. So previously what we had was the base model. So you can think of that as ChatGPT 3.5, ChatGPT 4, or inside the API, ChatGPT, Turbo, etc. So this was, or is, it's trained on random data. What I mean is by that is like the, it's, it's not specific data. It's just given all of the data. And then from that data, it tries its best to select from this absolutely ginormous pool of data and write a concise article. The problem with that is that data gets left out, data gets changed, information gets changed, and the end result is often generic or even just flat incorrect. There's no real logic to the model. It's just here's a model that knows all of this information and it will kind of do its best to make that information relevant to your request at that time. It can, it can be given a role. It's always been able to be given a role. You can say things like you are SEO GPT, whatever it might be. We've all done it, but it doesn't follow roles particularly well. This is kind of the problem. Like it can, especially with something like Stunspot or Synapse, Professor Synapse, it can follow roles fairly well. But to be honest with you, I think the Assistance API does a much better job. So it doesn't follow roles. So the output is very basic. The output is based on this huge pool of, it, it, it's almost like, you know, it, it, the data is like this. It's just drawing data at random from random parts of its knowledge and stitching it together like some kind of weird Frankenstein. There's no real context to the articles unless you give it context by prepping instead of prompting, but that takes a while. So you can still get good results if given sufficient prepping and prompting. But that's a whole skill in itself. So if you don't have the time to prep and prompt or whatever, then the fact that you have to prep every single time really, really slows you down. So you can get high quality articles probably in about 20 minutes it takes to get one good high quality article. However, the assistance API, and I'm talking specifically about using it inside the API and not using it inside custom GPTs. Custom GPTs are, are a craze, they're a fad. They might be really, really popular. I don't know what's gonna happen with them. I don't even think they're that useful because the real value from the GPT assistant API is the fact that you can give context to the API. So unless they make a change where your users of a custom GPT can upload their own files, then it's always going to be better to just make your own assistant. So while I do encourage people to use my GPT assistant, if they're, you know, they don't want to go deep into uh, prompt engineering or coding or whatever it might be, if you really, if your ideal situation is to have the best possible content, then I highly encourage you to either make your own custom GPT or even better work inside the API. So it's almost as if, okay, you take all of this information, all right, this is, this is the model here, okay? And instead what you do is you give it a small batch of information, but then also you kind of change its whole brain and its whole entity to just do one specific task. So it's like you take like a skin graft or something from the model, put it here, create a new model, almost like a mini LLM, like someone just left a comment on my YouTube saying that. It's like a mini LLM. And it changes the whole identity and it makes it much more specific and much more contextual and just frankly much better. It follows instructions in a much better way. Better than system instructions, better than custom instructions, better than everything. It just follows the instructions much better because you're changing the entire brain of the AI. So it's obviously going to work better. And the best thing is it's much, much more consistent. Now I can't show you this because I can't, I don't have, I don't have uh, permission to talk about clients' websites, but I'm doing at least, I think 10 Shopify websites in total right now. And the consistency that the auto blogger that I have made is amazing. I will leave a link to the autoblogger in the description. It's just on my GitHub as well. 
Um, I'm not getting anything from this. I don't make any money from this. I don't. I, I just think it's really, really good. So I highly recommend checking it out. There'll be a link to that in the description. Um, so the consistency is way better as the identity of the chat G of the GPT has actually changed. It's like a whole new GPT. It's almost like fine tuning. It kind of is fine tuning. Output can be highly contextual and it can use the context that you upload. So what I do is I give it product images, internal links, and you know whatever else it might need. And then for each client, it needs about 10 minutes to set up and then it can run semi-automatically. So I still do use ChatGPT uh, 3.5 front end for things like formatting and editing and adding different product images if it's messed up and it will still mess up. When I say it's consistent, it's like 90% cons consistent, I would say, depending on how the website is set up. It's about 90% consistent. So how does my auto blogger actually work and how does the assistant API also work? So the first thing you do is you create an assistant with the context uploaded. So if you go on the ChatGPT creation tool, I'm doing this in the front end because I don't want to go into Python in this video. I don't want to go into that stuff because people always complain and people say it's too complicated. So um, name, not important. Description, not important. Instructions are the instructions, the, the prompt, basically. So this is where you program a whole new GPT. This is quite complicated. You do need some logic. You need to try things and change the prompt based on the output, and you need to remind it to do the same things. and Many, many other things, okay? So instructions, prompt engineering, it's not easy. But once you get it, and you can just use mine again because my instructions are right here. If you go on testing3.py and scroll down to um, uh, line 26 where it says assistant, this is making the assistant, this is my instructions here. So you can just copy them. Like There's nothing stopping you just copying this whole script. Um, there's no paywall, it's just completely free. And then you can either say code interpreter or web browsing or DALI image generation, depending on what you need it to do. I use code interpreter to read. Actually, no, I don't. I don't use any of these thinking about it. I use knowledge. So I upload a text file of my product images. I upload a text file of the internal links and I upload a text file of the content plan all as knowledge. And then I just run the script and it, it just, it, the results are amazing. So this is the content plan, for example. These are the internal links, for example. Very, very simple to set up. And these are the products, for example. And again, there's even a script here that will read your Shopify website and give you 400 random URLs and product images from your sitemap. That's this one here. It's two men test.py. I should probably rename these to make them a bit more obvious. All you have to do is go to your sitemap Again, I don't want to go into massive detail in this video, but just very, very quickly. So if you want to get your internal links, I use collections. I use sitemap to clipboard, which is a Chrome extension. You click here, you click HTTPS, you press start, and then you just replace your my internal links with your internal links. And then for the products, you just literally right click, save the product sitemap XML. So save it like that. Drag this into your bit of code and then change this name in two men uh, test.py to whatever the name of your sitemap is. Okay. And then just run that script. You've got all your products, put them in product.txt, put all your internal links in internal links.txt, change your uh, content plan as you want, and then just run it. And the consistency is amazing. Anyway, I want to talk about in this video because I really, really think that this is kind of being slept on a little bit and people don't quite realize just how amazing this is. You can also do things like make a custom GPT for each client, train it on their data, and then just use that like for all of their content. Or you can just do that for your own website as well, depending on if you're writing for yourself or for a client. So what we do is we create an assistant with the context uploaded. And then you create a thread, which is like, so you create the assistant and then you create a thread and then you send messages in the thread to the assistant. Then you can either start a new thread, which I do recommend you do after each blog post, because otherwise the costs are astronomical, or you can create a new assistant. 
And then you can use this assistant as much as you want. It, it, it's there to be used whenever you want. So then there's just some very simple prompts. There's a product image and internal link selector message or prompt to this assistant inside this thread. And then there is an outline message to the thread. And then there's an article writing message to the thread. And the output to content is highly consistent, highly contextual, and ranks very well on Google, which is all we really care about. You can make this work for informational content, but I just haven't got time right now. You just have to change the prompts and change what information you're inputting and give it some images, give it some affiliate um, featured images um, and things like that. Anyway, thank you so much for watching, guys. I will see you probably tomorrow because I'm kind of uploading a lot of videos right now. And if you're watching this far in, you're a legend. Peace out.